So welcome everybody. Today we're talking about fall. We're talking about the fall season and what fall, what autumn is like in America. Now, grant you, the U.S. is a big country, so depending on what part of the U.S. you're from, it's going to be a different vibe. But we'll try to we'll try to represent. Okay, so let's begin. Let's say hello to Leon. How are you? Good, Ben. How's it going, man? Great, thank you. Ah, and yeah. hope you guys are doing well as well, yeah. our audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you believe it's already September? Yeah, I can't believe it, man. This, it, this year has been fast. I mean, the past several years has been also fast too, but this this year has been going really extremely fast. Yeah. I yes. still, my yes. mind is still back in last Christmas. <laughs> oh, really? Year. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, September, obviously, for the Northern Hemisphere is is fall. And uh, there's a certain vibe associated with fall in America. And so so let's talk about it. Um, do you know what's very interesting is I we had talked about this, how uh, September weather in L.A. is not fall like at all. And uh, I checked the weather. Uh, I just checked the weather and the next 10 days in L.A. is going to be in the 90s. So basically in Celsius, wow. that is that is like 34, 35, 36 degrees, something like that. In yeah. So it's they're having a heat wave right now. That's the furthest thing from fall weather, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh for us, I mean, it's pretty much all year round, right? That's why a lot of people are envious and jealous of the California, you know, Southern California. I shouldn't say California because Northern California is much cooler, but Southern California, LA because uh you know, in December, and we're going to the beaches, wearing shorts and t-shirts in December, and and there they are in the East Coast, you know, shoveling snow and snow up to their waist or knee kneecap area. So yeah, I mean, they they're completely jealous of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, no snow yet. Not in not in September, October, which is sort of the well, October being sort of the peak of uh, fall for most places. But so some of the imagery that we think of. Um, the biggest thing that people associate, Americans associate with fall is, um, the, you know, the leaves, the color of the leaves. It's a real, it's really a big thing. I mean, I mean, it is epic. Um, in New England, in the, in the northeastern part of the country, uh, fall, the changing of colors in the trees and the leaves and it, how beautiful it is. It is uh, spectacular and it's kind of a big deal. The, the whole leaf changing thing like it that sort of imagery makes its way into everything from uh, marketing to just people's general mood to how you even represent fall it is represented by a, a leaf even a, a you know a color of a leaf can represent fall right yeah absolutely i mean it's a it's stunning it's really beautiful when you see the leaves the color changes uh the four seasons a lot of american love living in the east coast and uh, certain parts of the U.S. because they like to have that four season, you know, uh, like in California, we probably have only two seasons, right? Hot and sunny <laughs> or well, or rainy, right? Uh, it's rainy season or or uh, warm weather. But in the East Coast, I mean, you see a drastic change of how the fall changes, you know, uh, the winter season. And it's just gorgeous. I, I, I love seeing the scenery of it, uh, a lot of greens. Even if you go to Washington, like Washington State, you really see a beautiful, you know, four seasons. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, living, being from LA, I was always very envious of uh, the whole fall vibe and the fall scenery and landscape of, of New England, uh, because I've been uh, to New England uh, and even in the mid Atlantic uh, in the fall. And it is so beautiful that I was very much like, oh, I, didn't, I just do not want to spend fall in LA. I just want to be in New England because it is so beautiful. It is so dramatic. And it is the stuff of fantasy. It is the stuff of uh, pictures. If you're a photographer, you're going to love it. If you love nature, you're going to love it. Uh, it's very moving, actually, the, the, the way the landscape changes and the way it looks. Um, people are so into it that there are websites, there are maps, there I'm sure there are apps as well that track the uh the the changing of the leaves it's um yeah there there's a whole thing of where they you know they give a report on uh the how how colorful the leaves are and when it's peaking because it gets to a certain point and um like you don't want to what happens later in late fall is that uh, all the leaves have fallen there's nothing to see on the trees anymore and then come the wind and the rain and it blows the remainder 
off. So there's like actually a peak time to go see all of this. And it's a big, it's a big industry. And it really drums up a lot of uh, travel during the season because of the beauty. And it's not just, oh, it's really beautiful. No, but I'm talking like it's really beautiful. Like if you want to see America, Americana, this is the time. It is the year, excuse me, it is the, the time of year that really paints a very vivid picture of what uh, America is. Yeah, and having not just, you know, the appearance, but just the coziness, the feeling of it, you yes. know, it's like, get out all your sweaters, your beautiful clothes, and just, you know, bundle up and, you know, get yourself some hot cocoa and, you know, things like that, uh, hot chocolate. I mean, you know, it, it's just a nice, warm feeling, you know, indoors and nice and warm and, and just enjoy the scenery. You know, people are really different when they're acting, right? You can see happiness. They're not like miserable in the fall uh yeah they're just enjoying the beautiful change of weather i mean uh people are different people are have smiles on their faces it's, it's just a great feeling yeah and you're gonna hear uh, like the uh, the way the, the weather is described you're gonna hear you know things like oh the air is crisp and indeed it is the way the sun hits differently right it's a little bit lower mm -hmm. the shadows are longer and mm -hmm. uh, the light is more golden. All of that is true. Even in LA, I noticed that. I noticed uh, always come September, early September, I noticed, yeah, the air is a little different. Even in LA, the sun does hit differently. Uh, and of course, we lose light as well. It gets darker earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, daylight savings, that's another be uh, bummer. It's like maybe by 4.30, it's dark already. Um, yeah, it is different. The sun, the the air. I mean, it's probably the the degree, right? It also drops yeah. too. And uh, yeah, I mean the vibe too, right? Even the food, like what they're serving, the things that you see uh, in the groceries or or Starbucks, what they're serving. I mean, all kinds of things changes once fall comes around. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I was at. Uh, I believe it or not, I was at a Costco in Spain the other day yeah they do have a couple of them here and you know like how in america um oh by the way if you guys don't know what costco is it's just like a big like warehouse kind of uh store i guess you guys might call it a paper market or something like that anyway it's um like in the in the stores in america come fall come september even in late in august late august or mid-august they'll have it'll be like an explosion of fall things right like there'll be all this like uh, Halloween stuff, right? I mean, an mm -hmm. explosion. But you know, at the at the Costco here in Spain, there was like two things. There was there was two, uh, you know, uh, pieces of decor that was fall themed or Halloween themed. And I was thinking, I thought that was funny because you know, in the American Costco's, it's like it's really in your face, right? The fall decor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um... But, you know, one, one thing, too, about, uh, you know, the fall season, I mean, you start seeing things like in the West Coast, right? Me and mm -hmm. Ben are, are from in L.A. I mean, we would start going to maybe cherry pickings, grape picking, you know, crop picking, mm -hmm. something like that. I mean, we go like maybe what? Uh, uh, Bakersfield, right? You go uh -huh. crop uh, picking. That's a nice experience, too, during the fall because the weather is much cooler and you're, you know, oh, yeah. not, you're not under hot sun and sweating. Mm -hmm. But other places, I mean, they have like... Uh, what uh, apple picking or yeah, pumpkin carving season. and things yes. like that yeah exactly hay rides you know that's mm -hmm. that's the fun thing to do too yeah. yes a apples are are really big that's it's like the season it's like the season of apples apples and mm -hmm. pears it's the season for apples yeah it's a it's a big thing apples and you'll sometimes see like baskets of apples and you know apples are really big in america during the season and it was very interesting mm -hmm. it's like in america there are there's such a variety of apples and it's regional as well but there's a lot of different kinds of apples right outside of mm -hmm. the u.s i have not seen the variety of apples that i've seen in the u.s i mean we have a lot seriously we have a yeah. lot of different kinds of apples and it was very interesting leon when i was living in thailand uh whenever i would go to the market number one the apples were really expensive <laughs> it mm. was as if uh -huh. it was as if it's something super special and rare maybe because they don't uh you know it's not local it has to be imported mm -hmm. flown in right so one mm -hmm. in certain parts of the world yeah apples are quite expensive not the case in america apples are not expensive yeah uh, and they're uh, abundant as well no more no more so than in this season mm -hmm. 
different color and sizes too right we got the red yes. ones we got the green ones and then you got the small ones you got the big ones and then we yeah. also have uh, apples imported from other countries too so we have a variety yes, of apples that's true that's true mm -hmm. and uh so yeah there's a the whole thing about apples and you know like there's this uh, things that kids do where they go bobbing for apples have you ever done that uh yeah the games uh-huh yeah the game yeah the kids do they mm -hmm. go they 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 basically put their face <laughs> into a a bucket of water with apples in yeah. it right and they try to mm -hmm. they try to sort of grab one with their mouth like I, i've mm -hmm. never done it i've never done it okay but how is that even possible how are you able to get an apple in your mouth yeah right uh yeah i mean especially the big ones right especially kids i mean you get a big one and they have games and to see who can either yeah. bite the apple or maybe eat the apple but mostly it's like to bite the apple and take it out of the water but yes uh, you know and, and their face the whole head if, especially if you use one of those big barrels right it's yeah, pretty yeah, fun it's a barrel. And, yeah yeah it's for, it's a fun game yeah if you like to get wet yeah okay so now in this day and age do you think people are still doing that because essentially what you're doing is everybody every kid is dip washing their face in this bucket that you're now putting your own face into and opening your mouth where that same water will go into your mouth do you think people are still doing that <laughs> americans yes it's yeah. just a normal yeah. this is one of our tradition uh it's yeah. a very common uh game for children mm -hmm. and adults too but other countries they're like well what, what is that then they find it very amusing and funny they never seen that kind of uh game before uh to them it's like wow really and the find they find it funny because you're you're actually putting your whole face and and your whole head inside the water trying to get yeah. this apple and they find that very amusing and funny yes it is it is funny mm -hmm. yeah. um uh, okay what else uh aside from apples obviously okay pumpkins are mm -hmm. really big um pumpkins not just like as decor like you'll see people put americans love putting pumpkins on their doorstep right outside their mm -hmm. uh their door their front door they might even have pumpkins inside their house they like to display a pumpkin like decor mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. for decoration but not mm -hmm. only as yeah. decoration but just also as an as a flavor as an, something edible as a you know pumpkin flavor everything comes mm -hmm. september october right yes i mean pumpkin is big thing uh during fall um yeah i mean we go to the pumpkin patch uh you know farm or pick out your pumpkin for the kids or you know like what you mentioned to display in the house you know feel that aroma of the pumpkin spice and uh yeah some some people will even buy you know decorations just on pumpkins it doesn't have to be like a an actual pumpkin right just the, mm -hmm. the decoration the design of it so yeah it's it's pretty fun to watch yeah I feel like uh, pumpkin, uh, pumpkins, and colorful leaves are the two things that are the symbols of fall. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, cinnamon, right? Cinnamon, the 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 smelling of cinnamon. Where every time when you go to retail stores or department stores or even like coffee shops, you it's just that smell of that aroma. Yeah. Yes, uh, pumpkin. Well, pumpkin everything pumpkin flavor yeah yeah you know, pumpkin mm -hmm. cheesecake is actually quite good i have to say mm. yeah pumpkin uh cinnamon apple ciders i mean these are your typical uh season type aroma and flavors and drinks etc yes that's right pumpkin apple cinnamon those definitely go mm -hmm. go together at the very fall and you're gonna mm -hmm. see that everywhere in american restaurants coffee shop stores starbucks they have their mm -hmm. um special fall flavors of their coffee drinks during this time right mm -hmm. it's going to be something mm -hmm. pumpkin pumpkin latte or whatever mm. i also miss candles too right i mean we buy a lot of scented ca uh, candles that we light up at home or apartments and things like that and just to fill the air i mean you can do it all year round but it's something about the fall that that you end up lighting candles you know oh yes i think it's it's because people are spending more time uh, indoors and they want the warmth of that firelight maybe and that's mm -hmm. why they like the candles and also the the scent they like the scent of warmth the the, mm -hmm. the smell of these candles that you're talking about they might smell like a baked apple pie or they might smell yeah. like a pumpkin or they mm -hmm. they they smell warm and sort of sweet mm -hmm. Yeah, that and also like uh, fireplaces too, right? That is very common once the fall. I mean, during the summer you can't light it up, but 
during the uh, fall season, yeah, everybody's pretty much, you know, getting their blanket nice and cozy on the oh, couch yeah. and, and put on that fireplace, you know. Yeah, yeah Americans uh, love fireplaces. Uh, I had a fireplace that I would like, you know, living in L.A. doesn't, it doesn't often get so cold where you're like, you really do mm -hmm. need to light a fire. But so what I would do is even if it's not not uh, cold enough, I would light the I would turn on the fireplace. I'd light the fire, the mm -hmm. fireplace. But then I'd also, you know, turn on the air conditioning as, as well because it would get too hot. <laughs> right. But right. Uh, hey, that's what you got to do if you're in LA and you want that vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Have right. a fireplace on, but you're going to have to turn on the air con, air conditioning mm -hmm. as well. And I know that uh, some of our uh, if anybody hears from Europe, they're going to be like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, you know, sometimes uh, L.A. weather gets pretty cold during the winter, can, right? I yeah, mean, we can yeah. get like 50 degrees, 55. For us, that's cold. For you guys, that's considered normal, right? But sometimes uh, on a on a record breaking, we can go down as, as 32 degrees or in the 30s, right? But those yeah. are really extreme uh, rare, right, for L.A. It is rare, yeah. yeah. But also I, I what I've noticed uh, about when cool weather arrives in LA is that even if the number, the degree doesn't seem that low, it will tend to feel colder because the low humidity actually makes it, makes it seem colder. Mm -hmm. It makes it feel colder, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing I find uh, very cold is uh, when you go to the desert, like uh, Vegas, where I lived there for uh, three years, uh, give or take uh, the winter time there is really cold. Like let's say if it's just the 50s, right? And compared to LA 50s, 50s in LA is considered, you know, doable. It's not that cold. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's all right. But when yeah. you go 50s in the desert, I mean, you feel that to the bone. Yeah, yeah because it's dry and then there's the desert mm -hmm. winds as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's the thing, again, and I said this earlier, that come fall, I really prefer being in the um, East Coast of America because... It is less dry. Uh, you do see some. You do see the signs of fall, the signs of the, the changing season with the trees and the leaves and all that. There's, um, it feels different, more so than in in the West Coast. And um, I also like seeing barns. It's a big thing in in the East Coast, the New England, mm. where a red barn in a country landscape mm. is sort of is iconic. So that's so American. You know what I mean? To mm. see a barn. Uh, mm -hmm. in a big open field, you see a barn and then you see some uh, trees uh, that are changing colors. I think mm -hmm. if you go to New Hampshire, you know, the, um, well, Vermont, those places, it's sort of the the pinnacle of autumnal splendor. I mean, that's it right there, man. That It doesn't get as good as that. You know, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. Vermont, right? Mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Yeah, nice. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's really beautiful, especially during those season. I mean, that's why you see a lot of people, they're living there. It's almost like a vacation house for them, like living on vacation. Mm. Yes, yes. I, I, I love that weather. Mm -hmm. um, people don't like the, the fall is because when you think of fall, it's like back to school, right? For oh, students. that's true. Yeah. yeah, so that's the one thing that a lot of them don't like. It's like, oh my gosh, is it fall already? <laughs> As kids, maybe... Or, you know, in the beginning of September, there is that, oh, no, summer's over. We're going back to school. Mm -hmm. But but I think after a few weeks, you know, even as kids, I remember, OK, I, it, it was, you know, it was a little bit hard the first few weeks getting back into mm -hmm. it. But then after that, you you're fully into it. And come October, you're like, all right, we love fall. Right. Yeah. Right. And a lot of Americans love fall is because what that means is, hey, guess what? It's football season. Right. Uh, we Americans love football. That's the all American sport, uh, all yes, American. Yes. So. You got to love that both football season. So, yeah, especially if you have a particular team that's, you know, that you want to, that you're a fanatic about or you're a big fan of. Yeah. And yep. we Americans were big fans of certain teams, you know, yeah, rivalry teams. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's professional football and then there's college football, which is also really big as well. Mm -hmm. Even high school. I mean, in high school, we have football. So, uh, you know, uh, that happens to us too, like homecoming. Homecoming King and uh, was right, that Homecoming? Right, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Football is is a big sport in high school. It's like the most important sport. It is the sport that sort of defines the school. Like if your school has a good mm -hmm. football team, your school is you know like the cool school, the famous school, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, and even being uh, uh, an athlete in high school, if you're a football player, you're you're like part of the more popular group compared to like other athletes. You know what I mean? Like football yes. is king. Yeah, football is the number one sport in the in high school. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 Americans love uh, going to sports bars to watch football together because everybody loves the vibe, uh, you know, and the and sort of the the noise of it all. People, we love mm-hmm. the noise of watching a football game together. The yelling, the cheering, the screaming. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I guess that's because you know, growing up as as a kid, uh, we play we have flag football in junior yes. middle school, and then when yes. we get to high school. We have the, the the football, you know, the tackle football. Yeah. And growing up, that's why when we graduate and go to college, and then you have yeah. other college football, right? So, and then when you get out of college, then you have the professional football. So it's kind of embedded on us, and that's why we love the football, uh, the sport. And and when you go to football games, like whether you're in junior middle school or especially in high school, you mm-hmm. know, on a Friday night, that's where all the right. popular people, all the right. students are there supporting yes. their team. Uh, it's a big party. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Friday night football, that's a big thing for all high schools. Uh, one mm-hmm. high school will play the rival high school. Yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Friday night, that's the night for mm-hmm. high school football. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a local gathering place, really. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Sociable. Some people may drink if they're underage, but they find a way. And But mostly it's just about partying, enjoying, and hanging out, cruising, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Friday night football, mm-hmm. and also Monday night football, professional football. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of like McDonald's, you know, these are like high school hangouts. Taco Bell, uh, maybe not so much Taco Bell. I would say more about McDonald's, like McDonald's, the go-to hangout for for kids to hang out. Uh, at least during my time, right? So they mm-hmm. would go to McDonald's, hang out there. I mean, you know, drive-throughs. You see a lot of teenagers there. You know, on a Friday night. Yes, yes. Hmm. Yes, that's true. Oh, that was a whole thing. I missed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um okay, what else is going on during what else is going on during I, fall? I, I say uh, you know, Halloween, right? Because that's in oh, fall. Right, so right, you got a lot of things yeah. going on on Halloween. You know, you got the scary movie marathons, right? That's going on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everything's you know, ghosts and stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I, I do the love that <laughs> season. I do love the season mm. of Halloween. Okay, look, even if Halloween is just one day, it's like all of October, there's all this stuff surrounding Halloween that I love. Like you said, like the movies, the scary movies. Every, I love that everybody's into scary movies uh, in October. Mm. Oh, yeah. I hate scary movies. I, oh, I, don't, really? I don't like what's, yeah, I don't like watching horror movies, scary movies. I try to avoid that. Uh, for me, the way mm-hmm. I look at scary movies is like if I watch it, I feel like bad energy is going to come or, oh, or maybe a ghost, you know, things like that. So I don't want that kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, you know, this reminds me, I'm probably going to watch it in the next few days then because I, I love, uh, you know, the movie Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm-hmm. It's a yes. classic, uh-huh. right? Yes. Right. So I really, Jason? I really yeah. yes, I really love that movie. Not just because it's, it really is a classic, but you know, it was filmed in South Pasadena, right? Hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. yes. I didn't so, know that. When yeah. I watch that movie, it really reminds me of home. Like I recognize the places. I recognize everything that, you know, all the houses, that style, the streets, everything mm-hmm. looks so familiar. And mm-hmm. I love seeing like, oh, that's what it looks like in the 70s versus how I remember it or, mm-hmm. uh, or the way it looks now. And I love seeing like the, you know, the cars from back then. Just it's just really I just love that movie. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, Friday the Thirteenth, right? That was also no, Halloween. no, no, Halloween, Halloween. But yeah, Friday Halloween, the Thirteenth yeah, is yeah. another is another yeah. big one as well. Yes, uh, I'd I'd say if I was to choose a, a scary movie, I'd probably put pick uh, what is it? Uh, Elm Street is it? The, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, I'd yes. probably choose that. Yeah, Freddy Krueger. Yes. Yes, that one is probably would be my my favorite if I was to choose a horror movie. Okay. You know, I watched like Annaville Horror, but that was based on a true story. But uh, oh, Amityville, yeah, 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 yeah. Annaville. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of horror movies. Uh, I, I, you ever played the Ouija board? I played the Ouija board, and I had a bad experience on that as a. Uh, oh, school, I gotta so. hear about this because yes, you know, yeah. I, I did see a movie about the, uh, you know, where somebody used a Ouija board, and uh-huh. no, I never tried it, 
uh, tell me oh about my it. gosh it's okay. real it's real hold on a second the... tell people what okay. a what a ouija board is first of all a ouija board is like a board game and uh the ouija board is actually you're summoning uh, a ghost or spirits so that's the game uh, you can the problem is they don't tell you the whole story it's like uh it could you can get a good spirit or a bad spirit so it really depends on of how you play that game but it's basically you're you're calling in spirits and you're interacting with spirits like you know ask questions like how old are you how did you die what's yeah. your name etc yes. yeah so this is what the ouija board is and but a lot of people don't realize that it actually is true and uh you got to be careful because you don't know what kind of spirit you're you don't know what you're dealing with and and my cousin brought a ouija board and i was like what's that and he told me about it. i was like nah I'm a, I'm a skeptical i didn't believe it and we ended up playing and we experienced two different spirits and uh, i'm a believer a lot of things happened to me on that time and uh for anybody who says ah oh, that's bs that doesn't truly happen and yeah my 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 answer my, my answer to you is go play it and then we can talk about it but if okay. you're not believer ouija board go play it and we can talk yeah this is a this is really weird because i do remember that you can buy a ouija board uh, mm -hmm. and it and it was sold as a quote board game but it's not yes. really a game though it's more of like almost some weird witchcraft uh, it is. summoning that's what thing. it is but why yeah. did they they wasn't it like milton bradley that sold it as a game that's blows my so. mind because it is yeah. not really a game it's sort of like some no. weird uh sub subterranean witchcrafty kind of thing but yes. on that aside it was sold as a game a board game mm -hmm. so it's a mm -hmm. board with a bunch of letters on it a to z numbers one yes. to three and then then mm -hmm. i think it said yes or no and so you're supposed and then there's like a little thing with a glass window almost like yeah, a, it's like a you, triangle yeah a triangle with a piece of glass mm -hmm. like a almost yeah. like a micro no, 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 a magnifying glass almost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and basically you're supposed to i don't know how you summon you'll tell us in a second how do you how do you quote call a spirit and then you're supposed to put your hands on that triangle thing with the with the glass in the middle and then the spirit allegedly moves that thing to show to spell out words in order to communicate with you or it'll move the thing to a yes or it'll move it to no or it'll move it to a number so how do you how do you get in touch with a spirit in order for it to move that let's call it a cursor to wherever they, it needs to move to, to to spell out something for you well they have an instruction on the box and you actually have to follow uh, follow that instruction and you have to be specific you can uh deter from that whatever the instruction is you got to follow it exactly what it says on that box and once you do that then you start playing the game then you ask a question and then you just kind of put your fingers on that triangle uh and yes. uh object and then you kind of move it to where it is sometimes it may not move you just have to be patient and just ask questions maybe it has to be the right questions but before you once you summon that ghost you can see things start appearing or something weird really? happening already so you know if it's actually working like for example you if you have curtains you know cloth curtains uh, you'll see it yeah, move like moving. like a wind or something like that so you know things are working can uh, you talk about you're... how you summoned or who you summoned well the first one the first spirit was my cousin he ended up summoning uh an older individual it was actually a black man a black american african-american he died natural cause he was like maybe in his early 70s late 60s something like that he actually warned us not to play it and i didn't believe it i thought like this is you know this is a hoax my, my cousins are playing a joke on us and we literally got uh my, my cousins and myself i don't remember myself being it but uh, we actually got, uh, what is that? Uh, the ghost actually entered our body. We got, uh, what is that? Uh, possessed, I guess you can say, right? Uh, we, we saw this kind of mist, kind of cloud, white cloud, you know, hovering around the, the, the living room when we were playing and it entered our body and it kind of spoke to us and saying, you know, we don't play this game. This is not a, this is not a game. Uh, don't treat it as something, you know, funny. This is, this is really serious. You don't know what you're getting into. Stop the game. Don't pursue it. I didn't believe it. Uh, we ended that game, and I said, "No, ne ne I don't believe it." We ended up going to the to the family room, and then I said, "I'm gonna lead it," and I led it, and we got the second spirit, and the spirit was a little girl. She was probably like nine, ten years old, and she died. She was murdered by some individual, a man. I don't know if it was an uncle. Uh, yeah, I mean. After that, things were were 
you know, uh, things were a lot of things happening, like the started spelling her name, the that triangle object moved by itself, uh, the board flipped, meaning because I said I didn't want to play this game anymore, and and she flipped the board and it just went on, you know, on the air and like you know when you're pissed off, you you take a table and you throw it up and it just scatters everywhere. That's what happened to the board. Uh, you know the the toilet starts flushing. The oh, faucet no. starts, yeah. The faucet starts uh, turning on by itself. They all, all the happened? doors, yeah. All that happened, yeah. All the doors started slamming like one by one, like bam, bam, bam. Uh, you know, she was closing all the doors. Lights were flickering. I mean, there was a lot of things. Yeah, we we heard her voice. Uh, all three of us, you know, uh, telepathy, you know, ESP. Um, yeah, we heard that. Yeah followed me home yeah i mean i can go in detail but i don't want to get it and bored everybody here i mean we're talking about the fall but maybe that's another you know topic, right, that's another but, story because yeah. i you've got me very curious and now i'm googling like scary we ouija board stories so we're yeah. gonna talk about this more next time mm -hmm. yeah but a lot of things i mean people will say ah you know that's bs and yeah this happened to me when i was like uh, in middle school i was about maybe close to 14, 13, 14 years old at that time. And me and my cousin, their brother and sister, the sister is like three years younger than me. And my older cousin was one year older than me. So mm -hmm. yeah, we play that, all three of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, After all right. School. Let's have a Ouija board. <laughs> can we have a Ouija board podcast? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we can have that. Scary, mo scary experiences, we can have that, you know. Yes, okay, I'm looking at a picture of it now. Yes, no, <laughs> letters, numbers, and goodbye. Oh, that, I forgot about that, so goodbye. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Hey, all right. Um, what else? Okay, let's see. What else goes on in the fall that maybe is not so sinister? Let's see. Um, how about, oh, let's not forget um, TV, TV shows. It's a big mm. season. It's a big season for TV shows. We brought that up in another podcast, but let's talk about it mm. again. So come September in America, what happens is, okay, in the summer in America, there are no new TV shows. Everybody's on vacation. It's, uh, everybody's off, right? Just like mm -hmm. from school, just like from school, uh, TV production uh, is on hiatus, hiatus, it's taking a break. Mm -hmm. And so all your favorite TV shows and series, they're not being filmed in the summer, but come September, that's when they all come back. They're filming again uh, and all the new episodes come out in the fall. So uh, lots of new things to watch. If you're a big TV junkie, this is the time for you. Fall is a big time for TV shows, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, all the series, all the funny ones, the sitcoms, everything comes out in September, So, uh, which is the fall. So yeah, we look forward to that because everything before that is mostly reruns, uh, pre-recorded, things like that. So yeah, we want to see what the new ones, new seasons are. Yeah. Yeah, so there's that. Although I think now with all the uh, with all the streaming, maybe it's not so like um, it's not so exclusive that things just mm -hmm. come out in the fall, but mm -hmm. they you know here and there throughout the year. But I think a good chunk of new stuff does still come out in, in the fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then I think we have to talk also about uh, uh, Thanksgiving being a major mm -hmm. holiday and sort of sort of the final the crowning event of fall is thanksgiving right mm -hmm. and um thanksgiving is uh, a huge 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 american holiday i mean really big uh right up there with christmas i think one of the two biggest holidays of the year is thanksgiving and christmas so thanksgiving is on the third the thursday it's the third thursday right <laughs> yeah uh -huh. yeah or it's actually the last thursday of the month yeah oh it's the fourth thursday okay yeah. It's always on the on a Thursday, and it's the fourth of the fourth Thursday of uh, the month of November, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. a, it's really a family holiday. So, I, what it is is the it, the origins of it is it's the first um, it's the first season where the pilgrims had a had a bountiful harvest. They actually after I don't know how many years of roughing it when they first made it to America, how difficult it was. Finally, it was good. The crops were good that year, so that's you know they celebrated uh with a dinner and that was the first thanksgiving and then that's basically how thanksgiving came to be and now it's it's become a um yes a, a a time where we feel thanks for whatever it is we have in our life 
And also, it's a time for families to come together. People, there's a whole lot of traveling, right? Have you ever traveled uh, for Thanksgiving to try to board a plane? Oh, uh, no, not on Thanksgiving. That's like a nightmare just going on, yes, on traveling yes. on a Thanksgiving. No, I try to avoid that. Yeah. You? There, have you? No, I haven't. But there are always news headlines and breaking mm. news about how how uh, horrific the uh, the lines are at the airport or all the problems and all the delays, right? Because add to that now, it's the end of November. So much of America is also under, you know, like some there's some snow, there's storms. So there's the weather issue. Plus there's millions of people flying home to their to their family, right? So it's a big mm -hmm. travel. It's it's a big mm -hmm. travel uh, day, or excuse me, the day before the week of, the week of really, is mm -hmm. very big for travel, and it can be very hectic and crazy as well. Yeah, actually, uh, I did travel uh, on the road going to Vegas, but that's it, not on the okay. airport. But even okay. the travel during on the road, I mean, it's horrendous. The traffic going to Vegas instead of like the normal what four hours from <laughs> drive a uh, commute to you know uh, to Las Vegas from LA. I mean, it's normally at four hours, but if you're driving. It can go as high as maybe seven hours, maybe even double the time, like eight hours, just oh, yeah. you know, sure. from LA yeah. to to Vegas. So yeah, I've experienced that. You go to Vegas. Thanksgiving is pretty big in Vegas. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on there. Um, yeah, I think uh, you're also right. I believe it's the third week because sometimes there could be a, on a on a fourth week on a Thursday, but it is on the third third uh, week of, of of November. Yeah. Yeah. So traveling is big, um, and Everybody is, is most people are off. Okay. Look, some, yes, yeah, smart markets are open. Some markets, not all, some markets are open. And if they're open, it'll be a skeleton crew. It's not going to be a lot of people working. Um, and uh, you know what? A lot of restaurants are closed. A lot of restaurants are closed. Some fast food is closed too. I, I, I think that um, if you're, if you're going to encounter any type of closures, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas would be the days where businesses are closed. Other than that, um, things don't tend to close in the U.S., but Thanksgiving mm -hmm. is a big day where things do close. I think uh, with us Americans, I think Thanksgiving has surpassed Christmas, right? Uh, I think it's a very Quite big possible. tradition for Americans now with Thanksgiving because Christmas is more of a religious kind of uh, holiday or uh, celebration. So, And a lot of Americans may not be uh, having any religion. You know, you got atheists or maybe different uh kind yeah, of yeah. religion right so uh i think thanksgiving i mean you know uh friends giving i mean that the, the new sure, term that sure. they have right yeah. so i think it's all i think it's all about thanksgiving it's bigger thing and and also you know football season you know there's a uh what the football right, game right. during thanksgiving right the, yeah. the all-american teams like the redskins and the cowboys well i shouldn't yes. say redskins they're not redskins anymore they're called the commanders because you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, really? They consider the Redskins <laughs> okay. as like uh, racists or something like that because of uh -huh. the Indians. So they took that out and they made it the Commanders, Washington Commanders. I didn't know that the Redskins refers to that. I thought it referred to the football. Okay. Yeah, Redskins is like the Indians. So they, the Indians, okay. didn't want that name anymore. So they thought thought it was you know uh, racist. So they changed the name. Now they're considered the Washington Commanders. And every mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, it's between you know, the commanders and the cowboys before it was the Redskins. So they kind of made that, a, you know, cowboys and Indians, right, on a Thanksgiving. So mm. now, now every game is the cowboys against the commanders every every Thanksgiving. Mm. OK. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yes, Thanksgiving dinner and people are watching the the uh, the game. They've got the game on. There's always a game on. Right. Whenever you go mm -hmm. to uh, somebody's house for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. the game is on. Yeah. That's that's very American. Mm -hmm. and of course and there's a the lot meal. of food yeah. yes the meal mm -hmm. food lots of food mm -hmm. and uh you know what's very interesting is me i i lived by myself uh in hollywood and uh in hollywood because most people are not from la the people in, living in hollywood mm -hmm. so the that part of la would be very deserted it'd be very quiet very very quiet mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, I i just thought it was very interesting how if you want to see la deserted Go check out Hollywood or, you know, and the center of L.A. right there uh, on Thanksgiving. It'll be deserted. Nobody's there because people who are from L.A. like me, I would, you know, I would drive to my family and they're like about, you know, less than an hour away. And I would drive mm -hmm. to them. I'd be 
with them. They, we, they rarely came to me, come to think of it. All the years mm. that I lived, lived in Hollywood, I don't, maybe one Thanksgiving they came to me, but no, for the, for all the years that I lived in LA, I, it was always me going out to them in the suburbs. It just seemed right, you know, because you know, mm. they're in the suburbs, it's much nicer. You know, there's, there's land, there's space, there's backyard, there's trees. It just felt mm. better to be mm -hmm. in, in something like that rather than for them to come to me, right? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess because uh, Hollywood is empty is because it's an entertainment industry. So yeah. a lot of the people who live there, a lot of them are really transplant. They're really not yes, originally exactly. from LA, right? So yeah, nobody their is. families yeah. are from the East Coast, Midwest. So they end right. up traveling during Thanksgiving holidays to their family, whether it's East Coast or Midwest. So yep. that's why it kind of gets deserted, right? So I think yeah. that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So there's nobody there. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, the food. The all the meals uh -huh. yeah. maybe that's why uh they you go to them instead and they come to you that's actually better for you because otherwise you'd have a lot of you know mess to clean up and also yeah. you got to do a lot of cooking cook the turkey and all that kind yeah so not, maybe not i don't know if you want to do that no no i'm not yeah. good at that mm -hmm. i'm not good at that um yeah um all, well also because of where i lived there was very little parking so it's you know it's mm -hmm. not that easy mm -hmm. i have had I have had big parties at my house, but I've had to hire a valet company to talk, mm. park people's cars because there was no parking. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it just becomes such a big deal to have anything at my house. So that's why I never did it. And it's just so much mm. easier to go out to the suburbs where there's so much space and big yeah. backyard pool, everybody, you know what I mean? There's just more room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so there's the dinner and the dinners, you know, if you guys, surely you know that there's that's the main thing is the turkey right so it's the turkey is the main is the focus the the big thing uh for uh thanksgiving is the thanksgiving turkey accompanied by sides like mashed potatoes uh green beans uh what other sides yams sweet potatoes cat sweet mm -hmm. potato casserole what other sides yeah do, do you corn what, what else yeah corn uh what is that uh oh my gosh um we're talking traditional Green, American collard greens, right? Collard oh, yeah, greens. Yeah, yeah, I like those. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes, I like those very much because they're made mm -hmm. with a uh, they're made with pork fat. That's why they're so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's there's a lot. I mean, ham too, right? Yes, uh, ham. Honey yes, baked yeah, ham. ham. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ham is the. Uh, it's got to be honey baked. Yeah. <laughs> it just yeah, yeah, be because it's got to be it's honey baked. Yeah, yeah that sweet. Uh, it's everybody mm -hmm. loves that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one thing too I like about the fall is the soup, right? Because of oh, cold yeah, weather, sure, so you want to get yeah. soup, whatever soup that season. soup is. You yeah. know, minestrone, chicken noodle soup, anything soup. Yeah. I do remember bringing a a carrot ginger soup to one of to a, a Thanksgiving dinner with family one time. People liked it, mm. so I do. So I like that carrot ginger soup, mm -hmm. excellent. Mm, yeah. Um, potato leek soup, I love that too. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Yeah. Even the, I mean, the dessert too, right? I mean, you said the pecan pie, which could be a yes. cherry cherry pie, whatever, apple pie is more apple very, pies. you know, a very American. Pumpkin yeah, pie. Apple, apple pie. pumpkin. Yeah, are, pumpkin are pie, yes. For, exactly. for Thanksgiving. Also pecan pie. Pecan, I mm -hmm. don't know. They call it different yeah. things depending on where you're from. Do you say yeah, pecan exactly. or pecan? Uh -huh. Pecan. Yeah. Pecan. Okay, so if you're mm -hmm. from the South, you're going to say pecan, I think. Yeah. So those pies yes. are typical. Same thing like uh, caramel, car caramel, or caramel, or caramel. <laughs> caramel, yeah, caramel. right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, after Thanksgiving, the day after is Black Friday, which and a lot of you probably have heard of already because it's sort of been, uh, you guys have somehow imported our Black Friday. I see it all over Europe now. You know mm -hmm. black friday these these sales right black friday mm -hmm. really is just in, at least in america and how it originated is it's the day after thanksgiving where everything goes on sale and it kicks off the holiday shopping season by heavily discounting stuff it gets everybody in the mood to start spending that's what black friday is it's just that day mm -hmm. the, the friday after thanksgiving where every uh, things are really cheap that's black friday i see this in europe and i laugh because they don't quite understand it's like they love to do what americans do but then yeah. but they do their own version of it so for example they, they they'll call it black friday but it's not limited to friday which 
hey, listen, Black Friday is mm -hmm. Friday, okay? Mm -hmm. So then they'll, but then they'll have it like for the whole weekend, the sale, and then they'll call it Black Weekend, or they'll call yeah. it Black, or they'll call it Black Week. And yes. now, for an American, when you hear something like Black Weekend or Black Week, we think that's like really funny. It's weird. It doesn't sound yeah. right. But anyway, they do sounds that. Sounds racist. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. It sounds like what? Uh -huh. So anyway, but yeah. yeah, they they do that in Europe. I've seen it. Black Weekend, Black Friday, mm -hmm. and then I've seen mm -hmm. them just randomly in the middle of the year. They'll just be like, "Oh, we're gonna have a Black Friday sale." It's like, um, you. Do, it's like they. It's like they don't understand the. Yeah. where what black friday means they just think of it as a byword for the word sale so they just call mm -hmm. everything black friday if they want to if they want to do a sale they just call it black friday so anyway mm -hmm. whatever it's wrong but that's what they do you know the one that, that, that i enjoy most uh, instead of black friday is really a cyber monday right after black mm -hmm. friday it's called cyber monday and actually yeah. you get a better deal than black friday the only problem is is that product or is that item still available because everyone's buying the items on black friday but if there are i mean cyber monday is even a greater deeper sale so for me i kind of like the cyber monday yeah. but mon but cyber monday is just all online deals right it's not yeah it's store. just online exactly yeah because yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. nowadays even black friday i mean a lot of people tends to buy online right yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's still a lot of people waiting in line especially those great deals like electronic stuff right but but yeah, I mean, you can get the same electronics even cheaper uh, on Cyber mm -hmm. Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they're they're kind of pushing this whole sale thing even earlier and earlier now, where it's all yeah. now it's like pre Black Friday. Get in ahead yeah. of the deal. It's crazy, yeah. right? Um, so that's like that week before Thanksgiving. They're already pushing it, and they'll be like pre Black Friday sales. You know, get in ahead while we still have. You know what I mean? It's so it's mm -hmm. starting earlier and earlier now. Mm -hmm. Um, and what else? Are we what about like the up? first frost? You know, you got the first frost that you know because it's uh, the fall season, and during that season, you know, you're gonna get something because of change of weather. You're gonna get the frost, and then you gotta start scraping, especially if you're in the East Coast, right? You gotta start scraping your car windows from the frost, and that takes time. Uh, before you go to work, uh, we don't have that uh, experience because we're from LA. We don't have that kind of thing. But you know, if you're in the East Coast, Midwest, you have to deal with that. Hmm. I've never dealt had to deal with that. Have you? No, uh, no, I haven't. But when I do travel, like during winter time, yeah, I got to deal with those. Sometimes I do deal with it, like on a, in the fall, like if I'm in the Midwest uh, on assignment. Yeah, you got one of those scrapers on the car rentals and. Oh. Scrape that window, yeah. I've heard about huge that. Frost. Yeah. So wait it a minute. Sucks. Yeah. There's there's like a thin sheet of ice over your windshield. Yes. Uh huh. Oh wow. Okay. Some people, the, some cars <laughs> don't have it, so you end up using credit card. For example, if you have a credit card, you use a credit card. But usually, if oh. it's a car rental, they have mm -hmm. that inside the car that they put in. Yeah. That you can use to scrape it off. Oh, yeah. Interesting. They actually put that in the car rental for you. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. You know, that's the thing that I appreciate about living in L.A., you know, in the winter where you don't have to deal with stuff like that. And I know that a lot of people who move to California from from the snow belt, they are very grateful to not have to deal with that anymore. Like they'll never go back, you know, because like they love how convenient it is living in California. Yeah, I have a, a, a boss, an ex-boss that lived in Detroit, and he says he hated it every time it's winter time. You got to rake up all that snow, you know, from the front lawn or even, even on your garage. Uh, yeah. And, you know, to get your car out and you do that all winter time. And he says he had enough of that. So he, he doesn't plan on moving or even living in Detroit anymore. And I've experienced that. I, I was only there for a week, you know, like, say, Salt Lake City or if I was in Colorado, for example. And during those snow season or, you know, during winter time, you know, you got like five inches of snow and even uh, even more. Uh, I remember. You know, I didn't have any boots. I just had my regular shoes, like, you know, dress shoes for work. And and those snow went inside my my shoes and I was scraping all that snow out of, you know, the windows and my car and all that. By the time I got in inside my car, you know, my my socks was soaking wet Oh no! Know, inside my shoes and everything. You know, you got to empty your shoe, get all that snow out of it. And yeah, your socks is pretty much wet because of the snow. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah. And I can't imagine 
living there, doing that every day for the whole entire winter mm-hmm. season. I can't deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. All, you know, because look, you got to wear boots when you live in that kind of weather, you know, with the rain and the snow, the sleet or whatever. Otherwise you will get, your feet are going to get wet. Uh, but yeah. the thing is, if you're driving, you can't drive in boots either. I can't drive in boots. Yeah, exactly. You know, the thing I hate the most about it is that your your door freezes. You can't open your door because you're it's so like cold. Your front door? Yeah, your your all the doors, all the car oh. doors. Oh, car yeah, doors. When you try to, yeah, when you go to the car doors and you open it, it won't open. It's already oh. unlocked. It's just jammed because it's frozen. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Never so whatever, whatever, whatever door you go to, the back door, the, the passenger, all the doors are frozen, stuck. And then and you got to try to open it and it won't open. I mean, I I'm not from this you know part of the states and all that. So I had to go and get help from the hotel guy and says, oh, yeah, that's normal. And he took and says, OK, wait. And he took like a coffee. I think he took coffee or he took some hot water. He, you know, he he boiled hot water. Mm-hmm. And then he went outside, and I was like, "What's that for?" And he goes, "Oh, it's it's a good thing to to defrost, you know, these these doors." And he was like putting little by little on the on the windshield and you know by the seal of you know the crack of the the door, right, the door frame. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Why don't you just pour the whole thing?" And he's like, "No, if you do that, it'll it'll crack the window or it'll break the window." I said, "Oh, really?" Uh, so you gotta like do it little by little. Oh, yeah. uh, or maybe not too hot, even just warm. W- uh, water will probably yes exactly yeah, yeah. but but he, he, he put it pretty you know until the the, the water was kind of a little bit above boil and then mm. he took that yeah and then he still couldn't open it too much and he had to like oh, wow. put one of his foot on the you know on the on the frame of the car and kind yeah. of like yank it out yeah and it finally opened up and i was like okay sweet it took me about 10 minutes 15 minutes extra time just going through that process yeah you know what? Snow is a pain in the ass because, you know, I remember like having December winter vacations where, where you know, we'd go to like Park City, you know, a famous ski area mm-hmm. or Aspen and all that. Yeah. And, of, yeah. and of course, um, that's great when you're on vacation. But I always said, you know what, day to day, this would just be horrific. Imagine having to go to work, commute, do grocery errands and all of that in this crappy weather. You know, when you're on mm-hmm. vacation, you can take it easy. You don't have to be anywhere at any specific time. It's no big deal. But even then, I thought, oh, it's still kind of a pain in the ass. But whatever, you know, we're on vacation. But yeah, if this is day to day, yeah, I can see why people, once they move to California, they're like, I'm not going back east. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I was in uh, Park City, Utah, and and watching all the snow is a beautiful sight. I mean, yeah. even when it's snowing, it's beautiful. But when yep. you go outside, you start driving and you got to go to places, forget it. That's something. I mean, if I'm just indoor watching the scenery, you know, not going out. It's a beautiful sight. I, I enjoy it, but yeah. you know, you're not going to be indoors all day, all all throughout the season, right? So, yeah, yeah same here. Uh, okay, so looks like you well, looks like it. Uh, we've got to wrap up, but uh, this was a fun discussion on autumn, and I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a few things as well. Uh, thank you, Leon. That was fun. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Till next time. See y'all later. Till next time, see you guys in the next podcast. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Bye-bye for now. Ciao, everyone.